tell me, in what ways do you think this film is so unique and never been done before experience? Well, I, you know, I, I, um, I think that the, you know what what I responded to when I read these these books because there's four books in the series and I this is just the first one. Um, is it's the you know it's the characters. It's I mean Hester Shaw is the primary character. The four books are really her life story and um, you know as as she's just a, she's a person that I've never really seen in a film before, in the sense of a of a protagonist who is mm. who's very she's scary. She's aggressive. She's you know, but it's obviously you know she she doesn't understand really uh, c connecting with human beings. But actually, during the course of the movie, she starts to, to to she starts to connect with people for the first time. But she's also very much a very sheltered, guarded character, and she's holding a lot back, a lot of mystery with it, with, with Hester. So that's what um, that's what I really have responded to when I read the books. And obviously, the world itself is a totally unique and original. Look into the future, three thousand years in the future, with cities on wheels. I mean, we've never seen that before. So, that, but that's the that's the setting. It was a story, the character story that really appealed to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly the same thing. I mean, I remember when I read the book, the very first opening sentence of that book, um, which describes London, this great, huge, giant, predatory city, uh, chasing down a small salt mining town. I just wanted to see that. It's just such an incredible work of mm -hmm. imagination. So yeah, I, I just hoped we would be able to make it and do. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the special effects uh, mm -hmm. part of it. So in 2010, you said you were a huge fan of the video game called Call of Duty. Mm. And it seemed like you preferred uh, games to movies. Um, are games still a huge source of inspiration for you? And why does it? Well, they're not, they're not inspiration, I, I, and I don't really prefer games to movies, I like both, but games are a very different experience. I mean, games are something that can last for like 12 hours or 15 hours or longer, and, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interactive um, um, experience where it's you, you living in this world with a, you know, some sort of control over, over your destiny and your fate, whereas a movie, you know, like any screen entertainment, is like, um, you know, you're sitting back and, and relaxing and hopefully um, being absorbed into the into the film. So they're very, very different. I don't think one's better than the other necessarily. Um, and I don't find games inspirational, I just find them fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, did video games play a creative role in Mortal Engines? No. No, but no. I think it would make a pretty good video. Oh, no, it would make it, you could do a great game. But no, no, I mean Mortal Engines is based based on a series of books that Philip Reeve wrote, mm -hmm. four books, and this is the first of the four books. That, that's the inspiration, no, not games. No. So what's the next evolution of WIDA and CGI? Um, what needs to happen to be able to do anything new? You can do anything now. I mean, anything that you imagine, anything you shut your eyes, you imagine whatever, that's perfectly possible. I mean, I guess the, you know, the real evolution is going to be um, time and cost. It's going to be, you know, because right now doing mm. these sorts of movies is every shot's very expensive um, to do them of this particular quality. And, and really, the, I mean, there's, you know, we're at the point where everything that you imagine can be put on screen, so the evolution is going to be just speed, mm -hmm. cost, cheaper, co more convenient, mm -hmm. to the point that probably in a few years, you know, kids will be able to do this and on, their, on their computer at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so are there any uh, limitations of CGI still? Or? No, only, only cost. Mm -hmm. Only cost. I mean, if you're making a low-budget movie, you can't afford you know, 2,000 expensive shots mm -hmm. if you're making a low-budget mm -hmm. film. Not, not right now, but as I say, you know, maybe in 10 years' time, you low-budget films will be able to afford mm -hmm. um, 2,000 shots because they'll be less, less, less costly. So. Tell me, how difficult was it to reinvent the steampunk genre? Um, what did it take? Well, it's an interesting question. We never really saw this as steampunk because um, that presupposes a more kind of Victorian world that then goes off in a different trajectory to mm -hmm. our own, whereas this is kind of just punk, really. Well, this is a look into 3,000 years <laughs> into of the future. Into our future, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. more, it's, it, it has got that cool energy, though, of, mm -hmm. of it's slightly anarchic. Things are, uh, especially the, uh, you know, the design elements, uh, the clothes, all those sorts mm -hmm. of things. Um, you know, this is a world where you, uh, they had to, Recreate things, reimagine things. So mm. it sort of echoes our world, but then it's slightly it's, different. I mean, as it's, well. not, it's not a digital world because the digital technology does, hasn't hasn't survived. So it's a, it's certainly an analog world. There's no you know it's it's, it's the it's the culmination of the um, analog technology that we abandoned in you know the mid 90s, I guess, or early 
early 90s this is this is projecting forward into you know so it's good old-fashioned engines and fuel and uh and, and stuff but there's no you know I, I mean i like the fact that there's no computers and ai and um that type of thing it's mm -hmm. like, like which most futuristic movies are all about that now so this is a there's much more gritty than that so what is the aspect of this universe that is the most fascinating for you and why well i mean the the aspect of the unit well it's obviously the fact that some cities are up on wheels mm -hmm. and that there's no more borders there's no more countries that the society has evolved into it's sort of almost like a um it's almost like a um you know the nomadic societies of the past the the um you know the um this sort of you know the hunter gatherer kind of society from the prehistoric times you know projected forward into with the technology the where cities can be up on wheels and they're roaming around trying to ch chase each other down you know for, for, um, and but they're not doing it for sport i mean that's the important thing it's not a it's nothing to do with sport, it's to do with survival because they need mm -hmm. to catch, the big cities need to catch the small cities in order to feed their engines because they can't stop. The, the second one of these cities stops, then all these scavenger towns will move in on them and tear, mm -hmm. tear it apart. So the, the, they have the, to keep the movement, and, the, and, and these big predator cities haven't stopped moving for 500 years. So they mm -hmm. need to keep catching, catching small towns to feed their, 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 their um, engines. So, you know, so that's, um, you know, I, I just love the way that Philip Reeve has has created this, this, you know, this very believable, mm -hmm. futuristic world. I mean, it's believable if you, uh, to some degree, it, might, yeah. it may be, a, may be a, a very accurate look into the future, who knows? Mm -hmm. So what are the characters in these films that you like the most and why? Well, I fell in love with Hester Shaw, the, the main mm. character, or, you know, immediately. And, mm. um, but it's not just Hester, there's a lot of great characters in the story. I also love uh, the character of Catherine Valentine, who is the daughter of, of um, Thaddeus Valentine. Because her story, um, it's told that there's a little bit more of it in the book, and we had to make a choice about you know which characters we were following. But what's fantastic about her, her story is that she lives a very privileged life, and then she, she begins to realize that it's kind of based on a lie. Mm -hmm. And that lie is the truth about who and what her father is. And then you actually see her world crumble. Mm -hmm literally because yeah. she lives on the top tier of this yeah. this giant moving city and uh so that's that was a fascinating character mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. delve into so yeah there's a lot this it, that's yeah. one of the things we loved about this was the vast range of the characters that are in here mm -hmm. anna fang of course mm -hmm. amazing mm -hmm. character mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm.